Hey, STRU friends, this is your personal invitation to co-invest alongside me. If you haven't heard, I've launched Stomp Capital Short-Term Rental Opportunities Fund, where I will be personally investing all of my short-term rentals going forward. And if you're an accredited investor and you want instant diversification and you want to participate in the best ideas that I identify, you relate to all of my teachings and the uniqueness and the sense of place and all of that stuff, then please click on the description below and find out more about Stomp Capital short-term rental opportunities. The best is yet to come and we're literally getting started. I would love to have you alongside, so let's go. Hey, 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 YouTube, what's happening? It's Richard, founder of Short-Term Rental University and professional real estate developer. And today's video are the six things that you need to know when buying your next Airbnb or short-term rental. I get asked this question all the time, and so here they are. Six things you need to know right here, right now. Let's go. So here's what I would say. There is no actual magic formula to picking a short-term rental that's gonna cash flow and that's gonna generate like enough income and be a cash engine to fuel your growth. There are many ways for you to pick your own Airbnb or short-term rental that'll fuel you like your personal satisfaction, where you wanna go, and only you can really determine where you wanna ski, which beach you wanna to go to, and that's kind of important. So this video has a little bit of both of those things, and the very first thing I'm gonna to suggest to you is any Airbnb or short-term rental investment property that you buy needs to be connected to your why. And what I mean by that is it has to serve a dual purpose. It has to be something that excites you and motivates you. And when times are tough and challenging, it still like draws you there, kind of like a loved child. You know, if they have a bad day at school, you still love them, you work through it, right? You're committed to it. If you're just buying this for income and it stops producing income, you're gonna get really fed up and frustrated and you might kick it to the curb. And real estate is not a get rich quick scheme. It's not something that you can do for a couple of days or a couple of weeks or even a couple of months and make a lot of money. The way that you generate real wealth in the short term rental space and in all real estate is having a very long runway. And so the easiest way to have a long runway is have property that connects to your why. And what I mean by that is it's something that you would enjoy doing, something that you take pride in, an area that you love to visit, an area that maybe you visited as a child, a place you want to retire. I mean, there's a million different ways to have it connect to your why, but please don't do what many other people do and just view it as like an investment opportunity, which is cold and math driven and it has nothing to do with it. You might buy a warehouse that way. You might buy a multifamily building that way. But when you move into the short term rental space, we have to view it through a different lens and it has to be connected to your why because you're attracting more people just like you. So if it attracts you for your why, chances are it will attract other people that have a similar why and that becomes your tribe. So the first thing, make sure it connects to your why. The second thing, and this is super important and I can't like stress this enough, is pick a place where it's legally allowed and taxed. Find a place that has connection to your why, that welcomes short-term rental hosts, entrepreneurs, investors, and this is part of the community. And in an ideal world, they'll have a lodging tax, an overnight tax, a hotel tax, something like that, so that the community is actually invested side by side with you. You guys are partners in improving the community. That will really go a long way. Do not find a place that is like shady or gray or illegal or, you know, I always say this in my STRU lives, the lack of law does not mean that it's lawful, it just means that it is yet to be regulated. So find a place that already has laws in place, and then we know what the guidelines are, what the sandbox is, we know how to be good citizens, we know how to play within the rules. So find a place that's already regulated, already encourages you to come and pay taxes and so on and so forth. And a little asterisk there, as much as I try to uh, pay as little in the way of taxes and defer taxes legally and all of that, in this particular case, I actually like paying taxes because it aligns me with the community, it improves the community, and at the end of the day, it's a pass-through. I personally don't pay the taxes. My guests and residents pay that overnight or lodging tax. They pay it. So two, find a legally regulated area that's connected to your why. Three, and this is really important and this is unique to the short-term rental space, find a place that is in fact unique. 
We do not want generic. We do not want plain vanilla. We do not want something that nobody's gonna get excited about in the short-term rental space, in the Airbnb listing, in the Verbo listing, in your own website. We want something that is unique and stands out and differentiated from everything else. Nobody wants like, well, this was a mediocre place to spend a mediocre vacation and I saved some mediocre amounts of money and there's really nothing compelling about it and I can't tell you anything about it and I'm actually not even gonna say anything about it. We want the exact opposite. We want people to say, the place was amazing. The host or hostess was fantastic. The location was incredible. The decor, it was like, I would have decorated it this exact same way. In fact, it was so great. I told my sister and my aunt and we're coming back next year. That's the key for short-term rental. So find something that's unique, that's differentiated, that stands apart, that people will talk about, that people will take Instagram moments and share them with people. Like they will do your marketing and the only way that's gonna happen is if it stands apart and is different. It's very different say than multifamily investing where there's 100 identical condos. We're not doing that. So don't just buy like run of the mill and ordinary. What worked in the past won't work in the future. You could buy those a couple of years ago and make a lot of money on a go forward basis. And that's what I wanna do on this channel is teach you how to think forward. Those generic run of the mill places are going to be the things where the cap rate, you know, where the rate of return gets compressed and eventually they maybe break even and you might even lose money. But if you have the best location with the best, whatever, views, the most unique home, a log cabin, whatever, a glamping site, doesn't really matter what it is, but it's unique. You have a very long runway. People will want that for years to come. So find something unique. Four, sense of place. What does that mean exactly? When people are in your cabin, when they're in your condo, when they're in your house, when they're in your town home, they must know where they are. So it can't be like clean and decorated, but I don't know whether I'm in Nashville or in Dallas or the Outer Banks or in Jackson Hole or in Costa Rica. So people are coming to your Airbnb, to your VRBO, they're booking directly with you because they are in this new community. Chances are they're either traveling or vacationing or doing remote work, but let's make them know exactly where it is that they are so that they have a sense of place. And we do that through language, tone, design, decor, suggestions, recommendations, but we embrace where we are. So here in the Outer Banks of North Carolina, where I'm filming right now, we put together coastal design, there's um, water, there's views. We create experiences for them on the beach and on the sound, and we have cabanas and we have kayaks and we have stand-up paddle boards. Like nobody who comes to our place here in the Outer Banks of North Carolina thinks that they're say in Jackson Hole, Wyoming. and when they're in North Carolina, they also don't think that they're say in Florida or Orlando or anything like that. So try and really find a place that has a unique sense of place and embrace it and highlight it and bring it forward so that people know, wow, I had the best time ever in Dallas, in the Outer Banks, in Jackson Hole, but they know exactly where they are and you've given them wonderful suggestions so that they know what to do when they're visiting your community. Number five, a way to actually increase your uh, rate of return and your opportunity in this investment category is to find value added locations, value added homes, value added cabins, either that were needing repair or have yet to be like upgraded and to actually do that work. So whether you're renovating or you're custom building or you're changing the zoning or you're doing any of these value added strategies. Now there are more advanced strategies than you know, perhaps a beginner should really tackle, but people are concerned about pricing at all time highs. Single family homes are at all time highs in most markets around the world. And so if you're thinking that we're at all time highs, but you wanna take advantage of this, go find a place where you need to renovate. And if you renovate, I would renovate for short term rentals in particular. So don't just like create a home. I have made many videos that like what worked in the past won't work in the future. Don't just create a single family home and then put it on Airbnb. If you're doing the work and you're creating value added stuff, consider what a single family home that's specifically built for short term rentals might look like. And so let me give you a couple of examples. Maybe your home is really into, you know, food, farm to table. And so would you have a bigger kitchen in a short term rental? Or perhaps you're not doing anything with food because you're walked to all these restaurants and so you'd have a smaller kitchen. Now that might impact resale value, but if you're in the right location with the right property and it's a short term rental, 
there will always be a bid for somebody else looking to buy that business because that's ultimately what we're creating. So start to think differently and more broadly about the opportunity set and realize that short-term rentals will be an asset and a category and you're creating a business and somebody will buy that business. Don't create like a Mickey Mouse run of the mill home that somebody else will just like want to live there full time. We're moving past that quickly. And the number six thing, and this is really important, is that you must run all of your calculations and models through what the long-term rental income would be. And if it cash flows and you can buy this thing and you were to sign a 12 month lease, then that's the backup, right? Like that's the fallback that gives you confidence that you won't lose a lot of money on this. You can actually run this thing as a short-term rental, in which case here in July of 2021, we're seeing between two and three times greater rental income from short-term rentals versus the exact same unit on a 12 month lease. But when we underwrite all this and we go through the process and we are analyzing, do I wanna buy this or do I wanna buy the other one? Let's also take a look at what the monthly rental rate would be on a 12 month lease, because let's just say you get tired or you decide to change your mind or you just wanna sell it to somebody who wants to do a 12 month lease. They're gonna look at the 12 month rent roll and determine whether or not this thing cash flows. So let's just use that as well. So again, we're not buying it to do long-term rentals, but we wanna take a look at that and make sure that it makes a lot of sense. And if it does, then that's just our peace of mind. We can sleep at night. We know that look, no matter what, if our plans change, our business model changes, we can always long-term rent it. And that's sort of like peace. So in summary, those are the six things that you need to know about where to buy a short-term rental today and how to do it and how to think. Uh, if this has been helpful, do me a favor, like the video, subscribe and comment below. Where are you finding opportunities? How many of you have done these like renovations? And do you understand about the concept of creating purpose-built and purpose-designed short-term rental single family homes? Because that's the future of the asset class. So the sooner we get there, the better. And if you want help, guidance, you want me to mentor you through that, please go ahead in the description below and sign up for the waitlist for the cohort-based class because that's exactly what we're doing. We're focusing on short-term rentals 3.0, the biggest opportunity that I've seen in my investment career in decades, and nobody else is doing it except for the people like me and the people going through the cohort-based class, and that should include you if you're serious about this. So thank you very much. Like the video, subscribe to the channel, comment below, and I'll see you in the cohort class. Let's go. Hey, STRU friends, this is your personal invitation to co-invest alongside me. If you haven't heard, I've launched Stomp Capital Short-Term Rental Opportunities Fund, where I will be personally investing all of my short-term rentals going forward. And if you're an accredited investor and you want instant diversification and you wanna participate in the best ideas that I identify, you relate to all of my teachings and the uniqueness and the sense of place and all of that stuff, then please click on the description below and find out more about Stomp Capital short-term rental opportunities. The best is yet to come and we're literally getting started. I would love to have you alongside, so let's go.